Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming, and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, the amount of things now that are happening almost on a secondly basis, it is off the charts. But what I want to share with you guys today, this one's wild. Did you guys see what the Church of England is actually considering doing? Check this out. I had seen many different sources reporting on this, and many of you had sent me a bunch of these different sources. Uh, but let me share this with you. This is recently in from the Daily Mail News. Article titled, Are Non-Gendered Parent Who Aren't in Heaven? Priests Could Stop Using Male Pronouns, He and Him, When Referring to God in Prayers, and Drop the Phrase, Our Father, from the Lord's Prayer. And then I just came across this from The Guardian, an article titled, Church of England to Consider Use of Gender-Neutral Terms for God. Let me read some of this to you. The Church of England is considering whether to stop referring to God as He, after priests asked to be allowed to use gender-neutral gender terms instead. The Church said it would launch a new commission on the matter in the spring, this spring of 2023, any potential alterations which would mark a departure from traditional teachings dating back millennia would have to be approved by the Synod, the church's decision-making body. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Michael Ipgrave, Bishop of Litchfield and Vice Chair of the Liter Liturgical Commission responsible for the matter, said the church had been exploring the use of gendered language in relation to God for several years. Listen to this. It is unclear what would replace the term Our Father in the Lord's Prayer, the central Christian prayer that Jesus is said to have instructed his followers to say together down the generations. So not only is everything all screwed up in this world, everything is upside down uh, with people confused on what sex they are. I mean, our kids are being indoctrinated at a young age. So you have young boys and girls now uh, that are confused on whether they're supposed to be a boy or a girl. And all over the world, this whole movement of, uh, I'm not even gonna get into it, it's a mess. And our kids are being indoctrinated at a young age. But now you have the Church of England considering whether to stop referring to God as a he. And they're asking to use gender neutral terms instead. I mean, this is all about appeasing the masses, folks. The ear tickling. They're going to try to say, oh, we're trying to catch up with the generation we're in. We got to please everybody. So let's, let's explore this. And that's what they're going to do in the spring. The Church of England is going to launch a new commission on this matter in the spring. And it's not just the Church of England that's doing this, folks. That's what I, I just saw that was reported on. I can guarantee you this is soon going to be a movement all over the world. Again, it's all about ear tickling. It's all about pleasing everybody. Let's please what people want to hear instead of what the Bible truly says. Let's change what the Bible says. Let's change what's in the Lord's Prayer so it makes people happy. Ear tickling. This shouldn't surprise us because we're told this is exactly what it would be like in the end times, in the last days. You know, I, I see stories of this. I'm immediately reminded of what's recorded in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, when the Apostle Paul says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And also in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, Verses 3 to 4, the Apostle Paul says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But I had to share this one with you today, folks. Um, again, many different sources reporting on it. What the Church of England is actually considering doing, uh, they're going to be discussing it a lot more this upcoming spring. Considering the use of gender-neutral gender terms for God, even changing our Father in the Lord's Prayer. 
All I can tell you is if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around this world right now to everything in Korean. Look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with them forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming. And he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.